Hi guys, in this video I'll cover methods, in particular parameters and return types. I start out with parameters and how we can pass arguments to these parameters when invoking a method. Then I explain return types and the different return types available. And finally, I demonstrate how to use the return statement to return a value in a method. So let's start out with parameters. The basic method signature is we have a return type, a method name, and then parentheses, and optionally one or multiple parameters. Or there could be none. Now, then we have a code block. This code block also referred to as the method body. And these are one or multiple statements. So let's um, give an example. Let's start with an example. We have here void, print hello. And instead of printing a generic hello, I want to greet the user with a name. So I use here name. This is an argument. An argument is really just a variable declaration, if you will. But the assignment, the initialization is, comes from when, in, when the method is invoked. So we don't assign anything here. We don't initialize it. It's really just a variable declaration, and it has to be assigned when this method is invoked. Now let's provide some statements in the body. So system out print line, hi, and then I just append the name. Now, I also want to call this from the main, so I had static before. And now I can call this. So I can call here print hello. Not then when I write it without any arguments, so I don't write anything in here, I just have open close parentheses, I get an error. This error reads the method print hello string in this uh, type in the class that I have is not applicable to the arguments. Um, basically to no arguments at all. I have to provide some value here. Let's say I provide Mary. So this works. So to distinguish here, the parameter is basically the variable. The argument is the value that the, that the parameter will be initialized to. So calling print, calling print hello with Mary will assign Mary to the variable name, and then it will output hi Mary. So let's run this. So here we can see hi Mary. I took the value here, Mary, assigned it to name, and then it executed the single statement hi, um, take the value from the variable, from the parameter name, and output it in. Now I can do it like this, or I can also define it for example, first name, let's say I have John, and here I call this method again, print hello, and I pass in the variable. So it doesn't really take the variable and pass it in. Essentially what it does is it takes the value in the variable, John, and passes the value over. So it's called pass by value. So it really just passes the value. <clears throat> now if I run this, I should see the first method call here is will print hi Mary and the second one passes in John, it prints hi John. Now so far I had one method with a single parameter. I will add another method with multiple parameters. So print hello string first name string last name. So Java allows you to have uh, multiple methods with the same identifier, but different parameters. So a different parameter either means a different type or a different number of parameters. So here I have um, a method with two parameters, first name, last name, and I output hi, first name, space, last name. Now, you can see this one still compiles, there's no errors. But if I happen to have 
let's say a last name and I just call this name well let's call it last name so I call print hello first name last name and it knows which method to go to so if I click on here it goes to this one if I click on this one it goes to this one so based on the number of arguments that I pass in that's the method that will be invoked and executed. So if I run this here, we see this method call prints hi Mary, this one prints hi John, and the last one with the two arguments prints hi John doll. Now let's go over another example. Let's, let's have a method that's called reset. And I have a number here, um, an, an integer number. This one is the single parameter. And I do number equals zero. So let's say I have a number variable in the main. I initialize it to five. And I call reset number. And after this call, I output number. Let's output the name before. So again, I have a variable declared named number initialized to five. I pass this to the reset method. This one assigns it to zero, and then I output it. What what will this output? Will this output five, or will this output zero? So let's take a look. Now this outputted five. So what happened here? The reason for this is that Java is always pass by value. So what will, this will do is it will not pass the variable. It will read the value in the variable, which is five, and assigns value to the same named parameter. So this number here is different than the variable here. These are two separate variables. This one only exists in the method. This only exists in the main. So when I have number here, this is a different number. It resets this one to zero. And, and this is zero in the method. But when I come back, nothing has changed with the integer here. So Java is always passed by value. So if you run into this, now you know why. Next, I want to move on to the next section, which is return types. So. Let's move this below here, return types. So what are the return types? Essentially, it's all the data types that we know plus void. So void is not a data type. Void is a return type. And all the data types that we, we know is um, integer, boolean, char, string, float, and any class. So we, we, and any type that you know can be used as a return type. And um, void is, is, is just, again, it's just a return type. It's not a data type. So the return types are all data types plus void. And for example, if you know the scanner object that we read from the command line, we could have a method that creates a scanner and returns a scanner. So you really can return anything. Now, let's say we want to have a method that computes the sum of two integers. We can have int. I name it sum, and I pass in int a and int b. And here I calculate the result, which is a plus b, and then I return the result. So it's a fairly simply simple method, but it gets the point across. We can pass something in, and we return something. Now, this here means that this method returns a value. And it returned that value is of type int. Now, here I have the return statement. And the return statement says which value to return. This simply says the data type that will be returned. But it doesn't say anything about the value. So from looking at int, I just know 
this returns an integer. Here I know exactly which value is returned, and it's a value inside the variable result. And result is defined by a plus b. So let's take a look how we call this from the main. So how do we handle return values? So first of all, I can call add 5 plus 6, for example. I want to add 5 and 6. Oh, I, I call this sum, not add. So this should be 5 plus 6. If I run this, um, there, there won't be any output. But everything works fine. It, it Essentially, it calculated it. It returned it. So what happened? I didn't, in this case, I didn't deal with the return value. So uh, it, it just got lost. That is fine. If we don't care about the return value, we don't have to. But if we want to, let's call this total. Then I can use this, the, call the method as part of the initialization here. For example, sum. Um, 3 and 7. So this will, co will call the sum, pass in 3, and initialize the parameter a to 3 and the parameter b to 7. Then it adds 3 plus 7 is 10, and then returns um, 10. Then it assigns 10 to total, and here I can use the return value now and output it, for example. Total is the total. Now let's run this. And here get the total is 10. So this is how we captured the return value and stored in a variable. It doesn't have to be as part of a, an initialization. So I can just reuse it here. Let's say I have num1, 5, and I have num2, 15. Um, and then I use total again, and I call sum with num1 and num2. So again, we can use variables, we can uh, use literals, like here. We can mix them, um, whatever we have. As long as the data type matches, it is fine. In this case, I have two integers that I pass in. That matches the parameters, so this is fine. And then I output the total again. And this should output at the first one 10 and the second one 20. There we go. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, we went over parameters, how we can define one or multiple separated by a comma. We can have methods that are named the same, um, but are distinguished by the number or types of parameters. And then I, we last went over the return types. The return types are all the data types plus void. And the return type uh, defines what is what type is returned by the method. And then the return statement here um, demonstrates how we re can, can return something. Now, last but not least, we could also simplify something. So let's do one last thing here. Static, let's say we add the same method for float. f and h, I can also write f plus h. So the return doesn't have to just be a value. It can be really any expression. We can just write uh, the calculation right here. And this again, I'm over overloading the method. I have um, same number of parameters this time, but here the data type is int, and here the data type is float, and this returns a float. So let's learn one last thing that when we have a return statement, it doesn't just have to be a variable. It can be a literal or it can be any expression. As long as the data type, uh, the, the, the data type of the value matches the return type. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching.